Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to do a very quick update on the Ledger Nano S. They have recently, they have uh, introduced uh, a few new features and things to their software. So um, if you're new to Nano Ledger or if you've used it uh, some time ago and then for a while you haven't really used it, you might find that uh, there are a few new things when you first open the application. So um, the, you have now choice between uh, Bitcoin, the regular Bitcoin blockchain, or Bitcoin Cash, which is the fork. So that's the first thing that you will notice. And then um, you also have a choice between the legacy blockchain and the SegWit blockchain of the main Bitcoin. And uh, some people are asking, what is the difference? Uh, do I need to choose? Can I use both? And um, the quick answer would be, you can use both, but uh, it's better to use the SegWit blockchain because this is the one that that implemented SegWit, which is uh, the, that change of software that allows uh, for more transactions to be recorded on the same block and uh, therefore you, with more transactions on the same block we have less of a backlog of transactions therefore the, the fees to make a transaction are being kept low. Uh, you can choose your fee, that's something that I'm going to show you how to do in this video. You can select to pay a smaller fee than the one recommended and um, by default you have three options you have a low fee you have a medium and you have a high fee but uh, they're not really that different especially for the segwit blockchain uh, the fees are really not that high and uh, you can even make a transaction with a very small fee if you choose to do so it might take you longer to get uh, that transaction confirmed but it will get confirmed and this is what I tested as well. I set a very low fee on my second transaction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log into the application and I'm going to show you how you can move your Bitcoin from your current blockchain, which is the legacy, into the SegWit blockchain, which is going to be a different address. So, um, you know, there are a couple of things that you need to do and I'm going to go through them right now in this tutorial. Okay, so let's open the Ledger Wallet application on my desktop. The first thing that I'm going to see when I open it is that I have a choice now. I can either go for Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. The two are separate blockchains. Bitcoin Cash is the hard fork that separated from Bitcoin from the main blockchain on the 1st of August. And um, now we have that choice after I choose Bitcoin, which is what I'm going to be working with. I now have a choice of uh, legacy blockchain or SegWit blockchain. The two blockchains are, uh, for the moment, are still operating as uh, one and the same. With the SegWit blockchain, we can fit more transactions onto the same blocks. This is why we are expecting to see lower fees on the SegWit blockchain and this is why it will be my choice. Um, I'm going to select SegWit. And um, if you're not sure about this, by the way, you can go to the step-by-step -step tutorial on the, this page. This is the official Ledger Wallet website. And they explain to you here exactly what you need to do step-by-step. -step. They're also mentioning here how uh, you, you should expect slightly less fees, smaller fees on the SegWit blockchain. So this is what I'm going to do here, exactly following the instructions on this page. The first thing is I'm going to select the SegWit blockchain and then I'm going to enter into the wallet because I'm now switching to a new blockchain it will be my wallet will basically show on zero because I don't really have any transactions on that blockchain what I need to do is I will have to go back into the legacy blockchain and I will have to send the money I have in there my bitcoins into this wallet so this will be a new address here what I'm going to do, as you can see, I have zero balance. I'm going to go to receive and now I'm going to copy my address. After I copy my address, I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go back to blockchains. So now I'm going to select Bitcoin again. This time I'm going to go for legacy because legacy is where my current amount of Bitcoin is being stored. I want to transfer it from legacy into SegWit, so I will have to move it. 
and I'm not going to move it in one go because I am a bit wary of making transactions of uh, large amounts in one go. That's why I will be making my, the first one as a test I will do with 0 0.10. But you can see that uh, here I have quite a few transactions and uh, I'm not really showing exactly the amount because this is private uh, information but uh, I have uh, my Bitcoin on the legacy currently and this is what you probably have as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send and here I need to paste the address from my SegWit blockchain that I just copied. Then I'm going to select the amount and in this case I'm going to go for 0 0.10 just to start with you know something that is not uh, too high and uh, and of course um, after that I will probably make a bigger transaction. I will make two or three transactions even though I'm paying fees every time. Um, the good thing is that I can actually customize the fees. So now I'm, I'm choosing the slow confirmation, which is the low fee, because I'm making a very small transaction. I don't really want to pay too much. Uh, the next transaction will be slightly bigger amount. So in that case, I'm actually going to choose the fee that I'm going to pay and I'm going to set it to something small. So now that I've sent this transaction, I need to go back to blockchains. And this time I need to select the SegWit blockchain where I should be able to see my transaction probably still pending. Let's find out. And uh, yes, it's showing in fact. I can see it here, it is still pending. Oh, I've actually received one confirmation in, in a matter of uh, a minute or two. So it's only been a couple of minutes and I was able to receive that even though I selected the slow fee. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going back to the legacy blockchain. I can see my transaction, it's showing that it's confirmed. And uh, now I'm going to make another one. I'm going to send, this time, slightly bigger amount. I'm pasting again the same address. Okay, so I'm going to send half a Bitcoin this time and I'm going to custom fees. And here I can choose how many Satoshis per byte I want to pay this transaction 30 cents for this transaction I'm going to pay it's probably going to take a little bit longer but uh, currently we are seeing uh, not a very big um, queue for transactions on the blockchain and uh, they're getting approved quite quite easily so I'm basically testing and let's see is, is that gonna go through let's go back to blockchains select Bitcoin, SegWit and uh, the transaction is showing up as unconfirmed. It's probably going to take a little bit of time this for this one. As I said, I did set it to a very low fee and uh, I'm pretty sure that it will be approved but I, I can't tell how long it's going to take. It could be a few hours. Okay, and now I'm seeing that it's already uh, gone through and that took about five minutes. So, um, yeah, just about four or five minutes for this transaction. So this is how you can uh, change the fees that you're paying. If you see that it's a big uh, backlog of transactions and you want your transaction to be fast, you can set a higher fee. Or if you're not in a hurry, like myself at this point, I'm really not in a hurry, so I just set a really small fee. Uh, I'm just checking right now what is the firmware that I'm currently having. And uh, you can do that by going into the settings and the different tools. Uh, you can select, you, you have quite a few different options now. There's, with this update, there's been quite a few um, new things that were introduced. So make sure that you go through all of the different uh, options here in the settings and uh, and see what they do and customize everything so that you have a better experience with the Ledger Nano S. 
Okay, so that's everything for this tutorial, guys. I hope it's going to help you. And if you have any questions, you can post in the comments below the video. But if you have any specific to your account questions or technical questions, it's actually better to contact the support team of Legend Nano S. They're quite hands-on and they're going to resolve your issue. And uh, if you want to find the link to that step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial that I was following, you will find it in the description below the video. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one.